Hi, Carol here and welcome to my craft room. I did this video last night in the wee hours and I went to listen to it before putting it onto YouTube this morning and it had too many crackle spots for some reason in the voiceover so I'm doing it again and here I just have my my favorite things and it's those new frame tags that are I just bought them in a haul and they're stitched dies that will make the frame for my card which is not a card anymore because I had an accident on my desk I fused together my aquarium and I put it on my desk but I didn't notice it slid over because I had it open to put the fish in it and the water I was just making sure it wasn't gonna leak and I set it up on my desk and I went to do other things and it slid down and water was everywhere and it leaked inside the tank and I had to redo it. And so I decided to do a uh, mixed media piece instead. Which for an aquarium card this size, mixed media piece um, canvas seems to be the better way to go than on a huge card. <laughs> so I'm using my 140 pound card stock to do everything with here. And I cut out some birds and I cut out some little... Uh, I had a hat die that had little flowers in between each one, so I wanted to use those inside the Shaker Aquarium. And here I'm using my favorite things, hybrid inks, which works well on this Vertigo uh, paper, which is a plastic paper. Gives the effect of water. And then I took my stamp scapes, and you can see I'm making a scene in the back of the aquarium, the fish tank. And stamp scapes, is, they're a beautiful company. They make beautiful uh, background scenery stamps. And here I'm using my uh, Ranger Glaze, and I put it over everything, every fish, everything that was going in that tank, so that it would slide on the vertical paper and water would not would resist on them. But then I didn't end up using water in it because I had to redo the fish tank uh, setting. So here we go. I took a piece of the square from the My Favorite Things dies and I'm making a little um, office seat. And this is going to say Dr. Smiles, Smile. And I am going to put it like a framed photo. And I did a faux metal frame just by taking the frame die and then putting it through on the opposite side of a dotted embossing folder so that it looked like faux metal. The, instead of the dots coming outward, they were inward. So it looked really nice. So here is just before the accident happened on my desk, it was going to be a water shaker card. But that's okay. We're just switching it over to mixed media, which is very nice to receive as well as a card. And here I have my crazy birds. I cut out three crazy birds as you can see there. Um, and then I had uh, some furniture stamps and dies and I cut them out so that I had furniture on the mixed media piece in this dental office scene. And it only made sense because I've been in dental most of my career in orthodontics so it, it was nice to do. Brought back some memories. <laughs> So here I have the stamp scapes and I'm making a window scene which is really pretty using the distress markers. That way when you use it on the stamp you get multiple colors which is nice. And I set a little piece of paper down so that I didn't get it on the actual tiny frame that goes around that window. I wanted to see how I just hold it there. I wanted to do a full look as well to use the silver embossing powder and around the frame. Yeah, so I'm adding a little bit of color down on the bottom where it didn't reach where I wanted it to with the markers. And that's nice. And uh, I'll try to remember to put that stamp set of the furniture and, the, and it comes with dies to match it. See the couch there? It has everything. So here I took a dauber and my distress markers and I'm just doing a background sky and I'm holding that paper up so I don't get it on the frame that I am going to emboss. So I just use uh, yellow and um, greens to make the sky. And we have the trees in the background. It's really pretty. And I use a little bit of orange. That's what I use there in the sky. 
And then I'm going to move on to do the outside of the frame. And I, th I was going to crackle it. I grabbed some of the Ranger Crackle, but then I decided not to because I didn't want it to seep into the picture. So see how I got it out there, the crackle, and then I thought, hmm, nope. I am going to grab my Versamark refill bottle and I am going to grab my Versamark pen and we are going to do the outside with silver embossing powder. You just, if you want a really thick look, just grab your refill and your pen and go around and you get a nice uh, 3D kind of look because you have a little bit more Versamark on there, right? So I did that all the way around to make the frame. There it is. Isn't it pretty? It really is. And so now I grab the furniture and I'm doing the little table that's next to the couch and I'm taking my Copics and I'm making a little distress table. I used uh, warm grays, blue and purple in the Copic family. And then at the end for that little knob I put some of that black eyeball stuff that I used in my last video. <laughs> and it made a really nice 3D a round knob on there. So here I am just doing putting my shadows in and making it you know look like a little table distressed table to match the office and then I put uh, there it is there and now I'm doing the frame for Dr. Smile in the faux metal and you can see how I am using the side that has the indented dots and I am taking my silver Versamark and or embossing powder and making that faux metal look. Now I'm taking my Copics and I am going to match it up to the little table so it looks like a little distress sign and uh, I used my warm grays, my blues, some purples and went around and I kept the white for Dr. Smile so it would uh, stand out and those are just uh, some stickers that I had in my stash for Dr. Smile. So I put it on there and now I will go over it with some warm grays and blues, the bottom. I'll grab my purple and match it up to that little table. And it was quite a nice uh, mixed media piece. Whether you do a card or you do uh, on a canvas, they both look as equally nice. So there you have the Dr. Smile. And I set that up on uh, dimensional tape. There's that set. And I think I show you the dies. Yes. I got that when I first started stamping. Uh, now I'm going to do the light, that antique light, and color it in. And I'm going to put the bottom half in the, in the uh, faux metal look, the stand to the lamp. And can't remember what they call these uh, little antique lamps. It's so cute. I used to have one years ago and uh, kind of looked like that actually. So I'm dipping it into my embossing powder. I'm going to heat set it so it's silver and there's my little lamp for on my table. And I'll fussy cut that out and I go around all the edges of everything I fussy cut with my 100 black Copic marker so that you don't see any of the white paper. And this 140 cardstock is thick when you fussy cut it. So even doing these small objects, it's really nice. Uh, you end up with um, a nice image with that type of uh, card uh, cardstock. That's what I'm trying to say here. Now I am um, going around the edges of that with the black just looks better. So, um, you know, when you're looking at it on different angles. So there we go. Put some glossy accents on it. And here is that where I'm fusing this in just before I put the water in. It's three uh, plastic sheets and I put it through one of them. And then I go to set it up on my desk and I went away for an hour, came back and it tipped over and water was everywhere. So now I'm on plan B. I grabbed a piece of that ombre um, paper that I had bought in the pink because I wanted the office to look like it had a little bit of a wallpaper background but yet at the bottom where the tank was I wanted it light 
and on the top of the wall I wanted it dark so this paper was perfect. So now I am mitering the edges with these little wee cutters I got at the dollar store. I got four of them for a dollar and they're sharp and they're small. They fit in your hand wonderfully. So I took my gigantic pail of Mod Podge and now I'm putting the frame around it. And when you're doing mixed midi, you gotta get your hands in there. Yep, you're gonna be sticky. There I take that little wee cutter and uh, yeah, four for a dollar. Got them the other day, they're wonderful. So, um, let's see here. We're just going to put all of the edges down. Miter them, because I like my corners really to look uh, like a nice frame. And this is, I think this, this is a flat canvas, um, which is nice. And then you can just, the recipient can either hang it up or store it, you know. I end up making it a get well canvas and I enjoyed making it just as much as I would have the card and the nice thing about this as well it's larger because that tank is quite a big size for on a card so this worked out really well there you go see how that uh, look is lighter on the bottom and then it goes into kind of a little pattern so I wanted to have the 140 card stock on the back because I want to decorate the back of my canvas so because you see the back and the front so I'm placing my cardstock right there marking it to go over to my Fiskars cutter and cutting it to size and there you have it so you have a nice clean look on the back of your piece and I noticed I had to take a tiny bit off that one section so I just took it off sliced a sliver of it off there so it was exact and then I put it back on. And then I decided to, um, there we go, I used Lindy's Stamp Gang bubble gum and I sprayed it all on there making blobs and everything else uh, to intentionally to look like bubbles. And then I took a baby wipe and I wiped it down just so I could get some of the, um, just a little bit more of a fused look. And here's my Tim Holtz spritzer. And I took a purple marker and put it in there and spritzed it all over to go with the bubblegum pink. Now I'll grab the uh, Victorian velvet to do the edges. And this is why I like mixed media. You get to use your fingers. You get right in there, you know, other than on a card. Well, I guess you could do, I do this on my cards as well, but this is, a, this was a lot of fun. I enjoy doing uh, flat canvas and here is some uh, paper I got at Michael's black and white paper pack. I love it and uh, I chose this polka dot one but I'm using the back of it because I don't want it to be that bold and I grabbed my Martha Stewart lace punch. I'm going to do the right and the left side of the canvas in lace just so it was a pretty effect. I like to use my punches as much as possible because we do have a lot of them if you're starting out with uh, card making. you I know I have a lot of them. Look how pretty that looks. I did it on either side. Put it down with double-sided tape. There we go. And that's the back. So I grabbed those, punch it, or those stamps that I got at Michael's some time back. And I am using great. Uh, purple and the uh, Victorian velvet on that made with love and I take my centering ruler to make sure it's right in the center and I take my clear embossing powder and emboss that on the back which is nice made with love makes it a little personal when you're sending it out to somebody and it has a stamp that has a rose on it. I'm taking my, now I'm just heat setting it. So I grab my rose and I put it in the middle of the canvas right here. And I use the Victorian velvet, some of the uh, purple, and then I wiped it clear so I could do the leaves in different colors. So I took browns and greens with the distress markers and put them on there as you can see. I want it to look very vintage and then you just have to puff on it 
and put it where you want in the center is where I wanted it. So I have my ruler there, my centering ruler. And then I used clear embossing powder and that came out really nice. I was really pleased with that. Um, you know, you have to take something that, uh, even though you know you work hard on it, but something goes askew and you have to have a plan B. I always have a plan A and a plan B. And I think this uh, turned out really well. See that background pattern in that uh, paper? It's so pretty. It almost does look like a wallpaper. All right, here's my crazy dentist. I put the boggle eyes in there, and now I colored them up with Copics, even though I'm going to put a lab coat. I did it all three-dimensional, the wing and the lab coat I cut out on him. But, you know, I didn't want to be able to see white paper, so I just colored in as if he wasn't going to have a lab coat on and that way if anything happened it you know you could see in on it or something so here I'm putting feathers all over his wing because it's a bird it's a crazy bird and I want him to have feathers so I put that on there isn't that cute and here's his lab coat I fussy cut out and then I put uh, Versamark on it as you can see here kinda and I got white embossing powder and so you could see some of the white and some of the dark uh, some of the black in there it really looked like an aged uh, vintage crazy bird lab coat <laughs> and I just went over it with my heat tool with the white embossing powder and I grabbed my little crazy bird dentist put some glossy accents around him and I fit the lab coat on uh, I thought it was only fitting to have a crazy bird beside a fish tank and disguise him as a dentist. Oh yeah, so crazy cute. <laughs> so I'm using my black marker to get the feathers to look black and white to match the actual um, mixed media board. And I'm taking some yellow and some oranges for his beak. And then I'm going to put glossy accents on that as well. There we go. And he is super, super cute. I'm doing his feet and his little tail feathers. I'm putting his lab coat down so it doesn't come up. Isn't he cute? Oh, I just think he's awesome. So, um, yeah, I have a pocket here that I'm Copic coloring. I just cut it out of some of the leftover cardstock. I wanted to put his glasses inside the pocket. I didn't want them on his eyes and I put glossy accents on the front so they really were high up and looked like googly glasses really funny so there it is and I put these glasses in there and looked at it afterwards and I'll show you once we get there what I thought it looked like so here is the um, aquarium I'm getting it ready I'm putting some acetate on the back of that faux metal and I'm preparing once again because my treasure chest got wrecked in the water so I had to redo another one now I'm putting little birds on the ledge of my window or the scene on the canvas these are so cute to create it does take a little bit of time and things do happen so you have to just accept that and move on so here I took see that um, twine that thick rope I had in my stash so I put it on the inside of the aquarium uh, so that the birds when it hit it would not stick to the double-sided tape because I made that three high and I showed you that stamp set it had a wishbone in it and I thought it looked exactly like a stethoscope and I know dentists don't use stethoscopes I worked for a doctor and had to use a stethoscope for years but I thought it had a cute look so I put it on him anyway I put it around his neck right there by his glasses and now I'm working on the couch I took four or five pieces of paper and I stamped out the couch and then I wanted to fussy cut it in different colors. I wanted to pop the pillows up with uh, dimensional tape, all different size, three different levels so it looked three dimensional. And uh, I'm just putting all different patterns in there so you know you go into the dentist office, you have a couch or chairs or whatever. and. Uh, just covering it with glossy accents. I'm taking my Copics to make it look three-dimensional on the couch, on the paper. I don't like it to look like flat, 
paper, you want to just add some color to it. Taking my glossy accents and preparing the back of the couch. Then I did the cushions in another uh, paper. And there you, I've got it on there. And here's the last little bit underneath that I matched to the back of the couch. So much fun. It is like way back when you were a child and you did, you know, you did all of this uh, coloring in your coloring book and you cut things out. You had paper dolls and you used to do their, uh, I used to make their little outfits and then bend them back and put them on. So it brings back memories. So here's my fish tank all prepared with the little fish inside and the little flower sequins. Here's the back with the lace border and made with love and the vintage rose. And I w I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. I've got my couch there. I've got the table, the lamp. And now my crazy bird, the dentist, has got to pop into the picture. And I put them on three, really, yeah, three levels of that dimensional tape. I'm showing you the pocket and the feathers on his wing. And I'm going to place him right beside that old fish tank. Oh, yeah. And inside the fish tank, I have one of the fish. And I had that saying on there that says, shh, S-H-H-H. He's telling the little fish, shh, that's not a dentist. That's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> ah, isn't it fun to get to play again? Oh, yeah. So here I had flat dimensional tape that I get at the dollar store. It's not, you know, you can raise it up as much as you like it, but it just has a little bit of lift to it. And it's super, super sticky once you put this stuff down. Uh, and our dollar store is catering to card makers, so I really like it. You find all kinds of things. So I thought, hmm, do I put it there? Yeeks. Oh, got it up there. No, I think it'll be more level there because it's bigger. Just for placement's sake, yeah, I end up putting it there. Then I grab my window and, yeah, yep, you're not getting that up. Put it down. So I have it down there, and yes, I was happy with it. So you have the full metal look of Dr. Smile, and you have your aquarium, and now his crazy glasses. I'm showing you how the glossy accents, I did them really high glasses. But the funny part right here is I had uh, that dimensional tape on the back, was too high up and so the glasses would not go down in and look at it looks like he's got a bikini top on <laughs> so at the end of the video actually this morning because I did this voiceover at one o'clock in the morning last night and when I listened to it this morning to upload it it had too much crackle noise in it so I had to re I'm redoing the voiceover this morning but I redid that and I put the glasses off to the right side of his I took the dimensional tape off the back of the pocket and put them inside his pocket but sticking out to the right so he didn't look like he had a bikini top on and I know people would say I never even noticed that oh you would <laughs> I did I thought he has a bikini top on so now I am doing the wooden piece for the top to hang it I grabbed some distress paints and I am going to calligraphy some get well soon on there. There we go. And then I'm going to add, yeah, some gold embossing powder with some Versamark just to make it look uh, like it matches the couch and a little vintagey. Thought it was kind of nice. I'm grabbing my Copic marker, my so that I can write the get well soon and on there. We did the front and the back. There we go. Get well soon. Okay, well, and then go right around soon. And it worked out really nice. And then I put glossy accents on there and put it on the top with E6000 glue. I'm going over it again just so it's really black. Putting some curly, curly cues on there. And I did it the third time with a different pen. That's what I did there. So it's nice and dark. Okay. Put some curly cues all over. 
get well soon. Yeah, there it is. It's easier than putting the stamped image on there. And now I grab my E6000 glue and a micro brush. Clean the glue up all the way around it. And you have yourself a little dental mixed media piece. Isn't that cute? There we are. And it's finished. I will just take you through and show you a little bit of it. And as always, thank you so much for joining me. I'll get this up. And uh, there, I'm putting the glossy accents on it. And it looks really cute, doesn't it? It's just a project that uh, gives you pleasure while you do it. There we are. And even though you have a little bit of mistakes, and I have to fix that bikini top glasses there, I just moved it out. I took it out. I took the dimensional tape out of the pocket so that I had more room to fit the glasses. Yeah, see his uh, Explorer sticking out there? I did the full metal on the end of the Explorer, so it looks like he was going to pick one of those fish out of the fish tank. Oh, yeah, subliminal message there <laughs> with the Explorer. There it is. There. You can kind of see it there sticking out of his pocket. So I will post a picture so you can see that uh, the glass is fixed up. And I'm um, shaking all of the fish in there. There's my little birds on the window and the doctor's smile. And uh, the faux dental tank. The frame around it I think came out really nice. There's doctor's smile. And I put that shh by the fish. I thought that was kind of cute. That, that big fish is saying shh to all the little fish. Don't, don't. That's not a real dentist. That's a bird. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a lot of fun when I do my projects. So there we go. Get well soon. And we are finished. I will post some pictures of it. And as always, thank you so much for joining me and viewing my videos. It means a lot to me. So you have yourself a blessed day, and we will see you later this afternoon with a new video.